Hi all, welcome to Simple Engineering, Engineering Simplified. I am Neetu Rahul. Today we are going to discuss about conductivity and mobility. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's move to the video. Conductivity and mobility. The charge carriers in a solid are in constant motion, even at thermal equilibrium. So, if you take at room temperature, for example, the thermal motion of an individual electron, that may be visualized as random scattering from lattice vibrations, impurities, other electrons and defects. So, in this figure, you can see that the individual electron that is uh, moving so these are the charge carriers in that solid so they are in a constant motion so it can be uh, visualized as some random scattering from the lattice vibrations since the scattering is random the net motion for a group of n the n electrons that is equal to zero so a single electron may not return to its starting place in a finite time if large number of electrons are considered there is no preferred direction of flow and hence the net current is equal to zero. So, uh, the scattering of that electrons that is shown in this figure and uh, we can see that electric field is in this direction and uh, the electrons that will be flowing in the opposite direction. So, in net effect the current will be zero because uh, if we are taking only one electron it, it will not return uh, to its starting place but if we consider some large number of electrons there is no preferred direction of flow. So when an electric field is applied each electron experiences some force that is QE. So the electron accelerate in a direction opposite to the direction of the electric field. If the electric field is applied in x direction then the electron experiences a force that is in the opposite direction that is minus q e x and this force is too small for a significant change in the random moment. So, if you assume uh, that there are n number of electrons the, so the total force will be equal to minus n q e x and if we take total momentum of the group then the rate of change of momentum is the force. So, we can take the equation as minus n q e x equal to d rho x by d t. The net acceleration is just balanced in steady state by the uh, deceleration of the collision processes. So, if in steady state sum of acceleration is uh, and the deceleration that is equal to 0. So, that is shown uh, as equation that is d p of x by d t in the field plus when we apply some electric field plus d p of x by d t while there is collisions that will be equal to 0. So, if we consider no electrons at time t is equal to 0, if we are taking time t is equal to 0, there are no electrons and n t is the number of electrons that have not undergone any collision at time t. So, rate of decrease in n t, the number of electrons that have not undergone collision at time t will be uh, is proportional to the number of number that left unscattered at t. So, that we can represent it as minus d n of t by d t is equal to 1 by t bar n of t where t bar or t inverse is, is called the mean free time and it is the average time before a randomly picked electron makes its next collision. So, uh, the first order differential equations, its solution will be equal to n of t is equal to n naught e power minus t by t. To find the rate of uh, momentum change from collision, we can check for the collision probabilities. So, the probability that the electron has a collision in time t uh, dt that is given as dt by tau. So, the differential change in the momentum is given as dp of x is equal to minus px dt by tau or you can uh, take it as t bar. So, the rate of change of momentum due to accelerating effect is given by dp x by dt when there is collision 
इज इक्वल टू माइनस पी एक्स बाई टाउ और टी बार सो द सम ऑफ एक्सिलेशन एंड डिसेलरेशन दैट एफेक्ट इट विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो इवन इन स्टेडी स्टेट ऑल्सो सो माइनस पी एक्स बाई टी बार माइनस एन क्यू एप्सलॉन एक्स दैट इज यूर इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड विच इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो एवरेज मोमेंडम पर इलेक्ट्रॉन विल बी इक्वल टू पी एक्स बाय एन दैट इज इक्वल टू माइनस क्यू टी बार एप्सलॉन एक्स एंड वी कैन कैलकुलेट द एवरेज वेलोसिटी ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन सो इट विल बी इक्वल टू पी एक्स बाय एम एन स्टार दैट इज इक्वल टू योर पी एक्स इज इक्वल टू माइनस क्यू टी बार एप्सलॉन एक्स बाय एम एन स्टार सो द करंट डेंसिटी रिजल्टिंग फ्रॉम दिस नेट ड्रिफ्ट दैट इज जस्ट द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट इज क्रोजिंग इन यूनिट एरिया पर यूनिट टाइम मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द चार्ज ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन माइनस क्यू सो दैट वी कैन सी हियर एज एम्पियर पर बाय सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू कॉलम बाय इलेक्ट्रॉन इंडू इलेक्ट्रॉन बाय सेंटीमीटर क्यू इंडू सेंटीमीटर बाय सेकेंड सो इफ यू कंसिडर दैट वी विल बी गेटिंग जे एक्स इक्वल टू माइनस क्यू एंड वी एक्स सो ऑल दिस यूनिट वी हैव टेकन हियर सो जे एक्स इक्वल टू एन क्यू स्क्वायर टी बार एप्सलॉन एक्स दैट इज आवर वी एक्स वी एक्स इज इक्वल टू दिस वन वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द एवरेज वेलोसिटी ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन सो दैट वी कैन सब्सिट्यूट ओवर हियर इंस्टेड ऑफ वी एक्स एंड क्यू माइनस क्यू एन इज देर सो दिस माइनस एंड माइनस विल गेट कैंसल सो इट विल बिकम प्लस then n that we have written here q and this q will become q square then t bar epsilon x by mn square so the current density jx is equal to n q square t bar by mn star into epsilon s x so the current density that is proportional to the electric field so if we uh, check for ohm's law we can tell that jx equal to sigma epsilon x so sigma is a conductivity so that we can write it as sigma is equal to from the previous equation current density jx equal to we wrote it as n q square t bar into epsilon x so jx equal to sigma epsilon x so sigma will be equal to n q square t bar by m n star so we have conductivity and mobility that is given as sigma is equal to q n mu n where sigma is your conductivity so electron mobility is given as mu n which is equal to q t bar by m n star and the current density that can be written in terms of mobility so j x we have already derived so that j x equal to q n mu n into epsilon x so the current density if both electrons and holes if we are considering the charge carriers as electrons and holes then instead of n mu n we have n mu n plus p mu p that is holes and electrons we have considered so our current equation current density equation j x equal to q into n mu n plus p mu p into epsilon x so that will be equal to sigma epsilon x so the effective mass determines how quickly a particle will accelerate so it can either heavier or lighter than the true mass of an electron so it will be different from different energy bands so 1 by mn star is equal to 1 by 3 into 1 by ml plus 1 by mt where ml is the mass in longitudinal direction and mt is the mass in transversal direction so our effective mass is mn star that we can take in terms of mass in longitudinal direction and mass in transversal direction so if we consider the drift and resistance the resistance of the bar that is denoted as r is equal to rho l by omega uh, sorry uh, wt so that is uh, rho l by a area so we are considering the width w and the thickness so that we can write it as l by omega sorry uh, wt into 1 by sigma so rho is equal to 1 by sigma so resistance we can take it as r is equal to l by wt into 1 by sigma where w is the width of the bar and t is the thickness of the bar 
so the direction of conventional current that is the direction of the flow of positive charges so holes that flow along the direction of e that is your electric field so holes will be moving in the same direction of electric field and electrons will be moving in the opposite direction so electron drift in the opposite direction so electrons has negative charge current due to this is also in the direction of the electric field so uh, the drift current of both electrons and holes that is along the direction of the applied field e and the drift current is constant throughout the bar see if we consider the effect of temperature and doping on this mobility there are two types of scattering mechanisms that influence the mobility of the electrons and holes so one is lattice uh, lattice scattering and another is impurity scattering so lattice scattering a carrier moving through the crystal that is scattered by the vibration of the lattice so that results from the temperature so due to the tem increase in temperature the vibration of the lattice occurs and due to that lattice uh, the uh, carrier will move through the crystal so the frequency of such scattering events increases when the temperature starts increasing so the thermal agitation of the lattice increases so that we can tell that when temperature increases mobility decreases so this is very uh, important in intrinsic semiconductors lattice scattering next is impurity scattering so this is for doped semiconductors and the impurity scattering is caused by the crystal defects such as ionized impurities so when uh, at low temperature the carriers move more slowly so there is more time for them to interact with the charged impurities so as a result when temperature decreases impurity scattering increases and the mobility decreases so this is just opposite of the lattice scattering so here you can see that in the figure impurity scattering and lattice scattering both are uh, mentioned over here so the mobility is due to two or more scattering mechanisms that add inversely so we can tell that mobility 1 by mu is equal to 1 by mu 1 plus 1 by mu 2 plus etc this is clear for everyone if you find this useful please share it with others and do subscribe my channel thank you